what you will learn from this book. Let me tell you a little bit about each of these items. The 10 top questions women will ask, one that I'm asked all the time is, will I be happier later? Good question, isn't it? Eight crucial facts few people know about cosmetic surgery. This is one of those eight. And you should know this because I was shocked to learn that any person with MD after their name can call themselves a plastic surgeon and do plastic surgery. Some of these people take a couple of weekend courses and lo and behold, they transform themselves into plastic surgeons. Be diligent. You want to select someone who is board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Don't settle for less. The three R's, the keys to finding a good surgeon. I talk about that in terms of referrals because they're good referrals, quality referrals, and I also talk about the caveats to referrals, research and how you go about it, and the resources you use, and personal reaction. Um, you should know that cosmetic surgery is part art and part skill. Your face or your body is the canvas. So you want to find somebody who's not only well-trained, skillful, but also artistically talented. Ten questions you need to ask yourself to determine if you're a good candidate for cosmetic surgery. Remember, this is elective surgery. It's not a medical necessity. There are certain medical conditions that make you um, maybe less of a good candidate. You should know what they are and discuss them with your plastic surgeon. If you're undergoing some sort of emotional trauma or deep depression, this might not be the best time for you to go through an elective procedure. So these are other areas to think about. How to avoid plastic surgery horror stories? Well, select wisely. We talked about that above. Then reveal everything to your plastic surgeon. Don't hold back on anything about your medical. Your, uh, and I have a whole list in the back of the book of things, including um, prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, um, habits. You have to reveal all of this to your doctor, and that will help him to do the best job, to pick the best anesthesia for you. Your plastic surgeon is going to give you instructions. Follow them carefully. Probably they'll give you a, a packet of written instructions. Read them over and over, not just once. And that's the way you partner with your surgeon for optimal results. How cosmetic surgery can impact on relationships in the workplace, in social interactions, even in the bedroom. Well, we talk about, and we hear women talk about all the time, that they felt they were invisible and suddenly that visibility factors pops up again and they feel that the world is noticing them. They're getting positive interactions. As far as in the bedroom, well, the first word in my title, sex, didn't happen by accident. So you read on and you'll find out. How to partner with your surgeon for optimal research results. I list questions for you to ask, step-by-step -step guidance, how to become knowledgeable and learn about the procedures that you're considering. All of this is in uh, Sex, Life, and Cosmetic Surgery. And don't overlook the back of the book where the appendices and other forms are because they are invaluable. What are the four best reasons for having cosmetic surgery? Well. One of them would be that you just want to feel more positively about your body or your face. You might have a specific feature in mind, like a nose, or maybe you would just want a refreshed appearance. Those are all good reasons for considering cosmetic surgery. The five worst reasons for having cosmetic surgery, one of them might be the person who comes in and says, I want to look just like J-Lo. Well, you're not going to look like J-Lo, and don't strive for something like that. Um, or the woman who deep down really is having this because she wants to renew a relationship that went bad. That's not probably going to happen and not a good reason for going about having elective surgery.